Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to church this morning. Um, the service will start at the back under the gallery where we will be blessing the Easter garden. The, crowd, the choir are already crowding the space there. But if you want to come, especially younger people, come and, um, and join us at the back. Otherwise, um, you can stand up and turn around and watch or you can stay in your seat if it's all too much effort. All right, so we'll start in a moment. If any children would like to come to the back to join us, so you can see the Easter Garden, you'd be more than welcome. Any families, anybody else, if you want to crowd around, you can do. Yeah, it's a teeny tiny garden. Don't, don't expect, you know, an entire garden. That's proper. Christ yesterday and oh you've all got a sheet pay attention you've got responses to make the little sheet thank you <laughs> let's try again Christ yesterday and today <laughs> Alpha and Omega all time belongs to him and all ages to him be the glory and the power through every age forever amen so this is our Easter garden. I would like, would one of you like to, can one of you read this banner for me? Tell me what, the, what it says. Fancy doing that in a big voice. Do you want to do it together? Joel, will you do it? Yes, you read that as loud as you can. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid. Shh. I know that you are looking Shh. for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Thank you, that was perfectly read. Thank you very much. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory, now and forever. In your great mercy, you have given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. By your blessing, may we who have prepared this garden in celebration of his victory be strengthened in faith, know the power of his presence and rejoice in the hope of eternal glory. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Right, you know what this is. But it's all right, don't brace just yet. I'm just going to sprinkle the garden. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now then, let's take a look at this. Who else is here? What can we see in this garden? What can you see? Flowers. Flowers, excellent. Yep, that makes it a garden. What else can we see? Rocks. Rocks. Yeah. And what do you think is the crucial part of the Easter story that's in this Easter garden? A cross. There is a cross in the background, absolutely. The tomb. Who said the tomb? Marvellous. And what about the tomb that you can't see because you're behind it? The stones in front of the tomb. Right. Who is feeling strong enough to roll away that stone? Do you think you can manage it, that stone that's made of paper? You probably can, Dante. Roll it away. Ah, there we go. What have we got inside? Tell me what you can see inside. An angel. An angel. Correct answer. Why is there an angel there? Because he resurrected Be Jesus. Because Jesus is resurrected, absolutely. And what does the angel do in the story? Who turns up at the grave? Anybody remember? Mary. Mary, yeah. And anybody else? Have you seen this? Come on. Come on, you can see it. Come have a look inside the tomb. You can see the angel. Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. There's, there's a bunch of Marys. All of them women, right? It's the women who come to the tomb, the women who discover the empty grave. And who's missing? The women. 
We should get that. We should sort out some women next, next year. We should sort some Mary figures. Ange Angela knows. Go on, what's missing? Mary Magdalene. Lots of Marys. Mary, the wife of Clopas as well. Um, yeah, absolutely. I don't know. It's a common name. Common name. I don't know. It'd be like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Mary's, I can't even remember which Mary's, there are lots and lots, yeah, it was Mary's mother, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the wife of Clopas, I think, yeah, I think that's right. Um, so, what happens, what happens when the late women come, they find the stone rolled away and there's an angel, then what happens? They speak to the angel, and the angel tells them he's not here, he's gone away. Now, in another, I mean, we have, there are different tellings of this story in the Bible, aren't there? In another one, who do they then see? Jesus. They do see Jesus. And there's a line in it that where they mistake him for the gardener. It's not in the reading that we're having today, but mistaking him for the gardener. They think Jesus is a gardener. I mean, that's amazing, don't you think? Change or <laughs> did his personality change? I mean, I'm thinking not because God is unchanging and unchangeable, but but no, I mean, it's a good question. I mean, really, what seems to have happened in all of the post resurrection visits is that at first people don't recognize Jesus, and you know, there's a line in it where basically they are, um, what's the, what's the phrase that they use in the Bible? But anyway, at some point, it's revealed to them that this is Jesus, but at first, they don't know it. And it's the same in the garden. At first, they don't recognize Jesus because they mistake him for the gardener. Yeah. Oh, they were crying. That's a good point. Tears in their eyes. They were grief-stricken. And they, let's be honest, they had no expectation that this would be Jesus because Jesus was dead. They didn't know what we know. They did not know that Jesus was going to be resurrected. Why would they assume that the person talking to them was Jesus? They wouldn't. But anyway, who's going to lift my little bag over Jesus? Janelle, do you want to do that one? Lift that little paper bag and reveal Jesus. Ta-da! There's Jesus. We definitely need a Mary figure. There we go. So there we have it. We have our little garden. So let, let's pray again. Let us pray. Risen Lord Jesus, as Mary Magdalene met you in the garden on the morning of your resurrection, so may we meet you today and every day. Speak to us as you spoke to her. Reveal yourself as the living Lord. Renew our hope and kindle our joy and send us to share the good news with others. Amen. And as we stand here thinking about the resurrected Jesus and the encounter in the garden, let's come to God our Father in sorrow for our sins. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples hiding behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May, God, the, may the God of love and power forgive us and free us from, your sin, from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by the Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we have the Paschal candle. This morning, those of you who are at our dawn service will know that we carried the light of Christ in our Paschal candle into a dark church as the sun began to rise outside. And now we will once again follow the Paschal candle. Mother Patricia will carry it down the aisle and she will say the, the light of Christ to which we will all respond joyfully. Thanks be to God. And then we will follow and take our places. Mother Patricia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ was raised gloriously from the dead, crushing the power of sin, destroying the sting of death. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the mighty power of God as Christ calls us out of darkness to share in his marvelous light. 
May we and all Christ's people shine as lights in the world. Is there a tune that we should be singing to that? Thanks be to God. Okay, there we go. Do that again. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to
In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, we continue our service now on page three of the service books. And we continue by singing for the first time since this, um, unless you were here on Monday Thursday, uh, for, for the first Sunday since Ash Wednesday, our Gloria in Excelsis. Let us pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Please take a seat for the readings. Good morning, everyone. This is the reading from Acts chapter 10, verse 34 to 43. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to those assembled in the house of Cornelius. I truly understand that God shows no partially, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching people by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord. That message spreads throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism of that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put to they put him to death 
by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, good morning, everyone. This is Palms 118, um, verse 1 to 2, um, the 14 to 24. The, the response to the spot, the palm is, I give you saying to you, for you be, have become my salvation. I will give thanks to you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever. I will give give thanks to you, for you have become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Joyful shouts of salvation, sounds of the, the tents of the righteous, the right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds. The right hand of the Lord raise up. The right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds. I will give thanks to you, for you have become my salvation. I, I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he has not given me but he has not given me over to death. I, I will give him to you, for you have become my salvation. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter and give thanks to the Lord. This, this is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I give you thanks for you, to you, for you have answered me and you have become my salvation. I will give you to you, for you have become my salvation. The stone which builders rejected had become chief cornerstones. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made we rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it. I will give thanks to you, for you have become my salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is a reading from the letter from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not 
I but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. This is the word of the Lord. to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, 
and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised, he is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Please do take a seat. So, here comes the confession. Yesterday, Mother Anna said to me, do your sermon in six minutes. Under six minutes, I said. <laughs> Under. Under six minutes. And there you go. It... <laughs> so what will the message be? We know, and especially for those who arrived here at dawn, that it was a glorious moment and time. And Mother Anna's already timing. And uh, it was a glorious time. For me, the very first time to be up at dawn to celebrate the fact that Jesus has risen, to call it out and to shake those rattles and tambourines so early in the morning, I know it woke up the whole street. <laughs> Easter is indeed a very important celebration for Christians. The Tridium literally goes along where we are taking a journey and Monday, Thursday, becoming the disciples and having our feet washed to strip the church. And then we move along. We, we have an afternoon visual where we sit in anticipation of what is to come. And there is more. There is the visual, that dawn visual as we had this morning. I think that the sausage sandwiches did add to what that meant. <laughs> In our church yesterday, as we gathered together to put things back into place. Hopefully, everyone will feel that it's not the same as it was before, and that there is a significance with the spring flowers, that there is some form of renewal. In Easter, one of the things that we give in order to celebrate, are we there yet? No. Two minutes. Two minutes. 
as we give <laughs> the gift of something to celebrate. But we actually use <laughs> we actually use Easter eggs. So Easter eggs are significantly they demonstrate new life because from an egg always comes new life. I says, maybe not our Easter eggs. In Eastern, East, Eastern Orthodox churches, uh, or Orthodox churches in general, they normally take real eggs and they paint them red and they give them out to people. We, however, have a different significance. Do I do this now? You're in charge, but you've got one and a half minutes. <laughs> Jesus is resurrected, don't forget that. Jesus is resurrected. He has risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia. So, I'm sending... Where's Dante? You're all the way up there. That's fine. You can be there, because I know I've had this conversation with you already. So, if there are any people in the church... We don't have completely red Easter eggs, but I'm asking you all to come forward, all children. All children coming forward. Yes, please. I want to see fingers going up in the air and them all coming forward. We have more than one, two, three. Come on, let's see you. Thank you. Oh my goodness, we have all our youth here. How wonderful is that sight? Did okay. I hear a voice of cynicism there saying they've come for the chocolates? Yes. Yeah. Did I hear someone say that? Yes. Well, you're not wrong, but it's fine. Yes. Come on forward. So, within our church, so bigger children, please make sure that the little children find the coloured ones. The coloured eggs that are hidden around our church. Yeah, okay. They're all in plain sight. You don't need to open yeah. things. No, nope. they're all in plain sight. You don't need to lift things or open things, and they're all in the church. You don't need to go outside. Go and find all of the eggs. Do you see the one by the eagle here? There's a lot of those. I don't know how many. I didn't count them. Go and see how many you can find. Older yes. ones help little ones, and then bring them to us at the front. Some of you go off that way, some of you go off that way, and three, two, one, go! Go! So, big children, do not hop on. Dante! Make sure that the little Help the little ones! And when you have found these eggs, I want them to place them on the Easter tree. Where's the Easter tree? This one. Yeah. I thank you. Dante, have they found all the hard ones? Have they? Yeah. Yeah. It was. Well done, well done, Dante. Okay, I put one, an egg up here. I know there's one hanging on the wall that's quite tricky, wasn't there? All right, Benjamin. How many, how many eggs have we got? Have you got eggs? Come and place them on the tree. How fantastic. Any more eggs to go on the tree? Yep, some more. Let's get them all on. You have all done an amazing job. Adults, can you see any that they've missed? Can anybody see an egg that has been missed? Or do we think we've got them all? You must have them. I don't know, I didn't count them. Have we got them all? It looks that way. Right, brilliant. Oh, now, oh, that's a load. Well done. I didn't count them. That seems about right. So, there will oh, be 20. chocolate. 
Oh, you found another one. So you missed one. You missed one. Thank goodness we've got a church warden on the game. <laughs> In the game. <laughs> oh, I don't. <laughs> Thank you. Now then, there will be chocolate eggs. There will be. They're all there. You can see them. There's loads of chocolate eggs. We've got vegan chocolate eggs as well for those people who can't have dairy. But you're not having it now because we want you to pay attention to church. And you won't be paying attention to church if you're trying to suck all the innards out of a cream egg. So go back. At the end of the service, we'll be at the back of the church and you can get your chocolate then. There will be chocolate, we promise. But you've got to pay attention first. Well done. Let's have a round of applause for the children who did a brilliant job there. And for the church warden. It can go back here for now, out of the way, so that I don't fall over it. Brilliant. Thank you, Mother Patricia. Well, if we include, we won't include the Easter egg hunt. <laughs> brilliant. Jesus Christ is risen. Alleluia. And now. If you're comfortable standing, let's stand and declare with confidence our faith in the risen Lord. You can find the words of the creed in your service booklet. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now as we come to a time of prayer, please stand or sit or kneel as you feel comfortable. And in joy and hope, let us pray to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mystery and liberation, your son has spoken. Your son has broken free from the tomb and has rescued us from the burden of sin. We give thanks that this momentous happening quietly and quickly gained currency and still does so today across the world. We ask that the new life of the resurrection becomes our guide and our shield in all we do. Bring us constantly back to the miracle of the open tomb. Wherever we doubt or when we stray into backwards of belief, today we have good news to proclaim. So let us be glad 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the ministry of your church in sharing your word and witnessing to your love. Help us, help us all to strengthen the bond between church and community, between you and us, between past and future. Deepen our understanding of the Old and New Testaments, the Old and New Covenants. Make our church a real learning community with your son, the risen savior, as our teacher and role model. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we celebrate the Feast of Easter, after the penitence of Lent and the sorrow of Good Friday, let us not forget the parts of the world where sorrow and hardship are known, especially the people of Ukraine and the Gaza and all areas where Christians are persecuted and where natural forces have caused destruction. May the, may the joy of Easter break through poverty and distress. And may Christians everywhere always seek justice along, alongside meeting the urgent needs of the day-to-day -day living among neighbors near and far. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. In our community, we pray for Michael Kabirongo, Althea King Challenger, Jeffrey Kingsley, Tracy Kingsley, Betty Kirby, and all their families and loved ones. For our parish, we pray for all who live or work on Harrington Terrace, Hallow Road, Hazelbury Road, Hazel Close, Hedge Lane. And this week, we also pray for Archbishop Justin, Bishop Sarah, Canon Anderson, our bishop designate, the archdeacon, Father John, the area dean, Father Stephen, our vicar, Mother Anna, and our curate, Mother Patricia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May those who are poor in health, be strong in spirit, as the hope of Easter brings comfort to the soul, even if the flesh is weak. Bring a collective healing and wholeness to your people on this day. Cared and carers, families and professionals, Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Let the peace that you bring enfold those who have died and are now in your closer presence. And may that peace extend to the mourners connected with their loved ones by fond memories and shared faith. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're comfortable standing, please stand. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. 
Okay, let's try that again. Christ has been raised from the dead. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be always with you. We are going to offer one another a sign of peace. You can do this any way you like. You can hug the people you love. You can wave at people you don't know. You can shake their hands. But we also sometimes use a sign where we go, peace be with you. Peace be with you. So let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
delivered us from the bondage of sin and the fear of death into the glorious liberty of the children of God. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of St. Aldelm and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread.
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, shall be healed.
wonderful. Christ is risen indeed. We do have a responsory in your um, sheets. I think you've got, if you've got a responsory at the end of your service booklet that starts with, Alleluia, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Have you got that one? Yes. At the end? Yeah, right, let's do it. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has claimed us as his own. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thank you all for being here this morning. Thank you especially to those who were here at 5.30 this morning for the dawn vigil. Um, which was absolutely joyous, as Mother Patricia said. Um, children, don't worry, I haven't forgotten the chocolate. There is chocolate. In fact, Mother Patricia, do you want to go and walk the, walk the um, aisles and hand out the chocolate as I give out the rather boring notices? Do you want me to bless chocolate? Why not? She wants me to bless the Easter eggs. Do we bless chocolate? Yeah. Why not? All right, let's bless the eggs. This is a first. I did once bless a chicken. <laughs> I really did. Somebody came to me and I, and with a chicken and asked me to... It was a li living chicken. It wasn't like for dinner. It was like a clocking chicken. I mean, it was called Margaret. So I blessed a chicken called Margaret. <laughs> and now I'm going to bless these eggs. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the gifts of today. We thank you for the gift of new life in Jesus. And we thank you for the gift of um, new life in our children and the young people who worship with us. And we bless these eggs as we bless your generosity and hospitality in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We pray that all who receive these eggs will be blessed by you generously today and in the weeks of Easter ahead. Amen. Amen. Right. So if you want some chocolate, you need to stand up. I mean, if you're under 21, you're more likely to get the chocolate. <laughs> Don't be shy. Um, we do have some vegan chocolate as well. I don't think Mother Patricia's got that. Have you got the vegan chocolate there as well? Okay, marvellous. Brilliant. So while Mother Patricia is doing that, a couple of brief notices, um, just to draw your attention to the fact it's on the back of the pew sheet. Um, this is, the week after Easter is traditionally a very quiet time in the church, largely because your clergy are absolutely shattered. So, the church will be closed this week. There are no midweek services. There, there are no midweek activities. There's no food bank. Um, uh, and so, th uh, things go back to normal next Sunday. Um, so, that's that. Um, you'll see I've put a notice in here, which is just something to bear in mind. It's not a church notice. It's a general notice. We have elections coming up. I know this because our church hall is a polling station. This time, for the, please remember that you will not be allowed to vote unless you have the correct photo ID with you. This is a new thing, so if you haven't been paying attention to the news and so on, you may not know this. You have to have the correct photo ID with you when it comes time to vote. Now, it's a month away, it's the 2nd of May, but I'll mention this again. Um, correct photo ID includes a UK passport, a UK photo card driving license, um, or a freedom pass for those who are either disabled or over 60. Um, but yes, uh, you will not be able to vote unless you have that ID with you. Um, is there anything, I don't think there's any other notices um, that I have apart from birthdays. And, oh, Julie's coming to me like there is a notice. Go on. We've got hot cross buns. We do have hot cross buns. And there's banana cake at the back. Hot cross sure. buns and, and cake, along with, along with cheese and coffees okay. after the service. Um, and do make sure you get chocolate. Um, if the kids haven't completely emptied the plate uh, when you go out, then snuffle a cream egg yourself. Um, and thank you. Praise God. It's always an absolute joy. Thank you to those of you who have walked with us through the Triduum on Maundy Thursday and Good Friday um, and who have experienced the walk with Jesus from the Last Supper <laughs> to the cross and the empty tomb. Oh, the choir are saying yes, I see. Every one for me left. Anyway. So, any birthdays this week? Any birthdays? Anybody wants a blessing for a birthday this week? Yeah? Your mum? On Tuesday? 
90, amazing. We will bless Joan's mum. What's your mum's name, Joan? Winnie. Okay, any other birthdays? Your son, your little boy, on Tuesday, on Tuesday. So we, that's a 90-year-old and a what? And a eight-year-old, okay? That's pretty good. A 90-year-old and an eight-year-old on Tuesday. So that's pretty diverse. Any other birthdays? Well, let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for everyone whose birthday is this week. My daughter Matilda, it's her birthday this week. So we'll pray for her as well. So we pray for everyone who has a birthday this week. And we ask, Father, for your blessing on them, on their birthday and in the year ahead. We thank you for all that they are and mean to us. Whether you, they are 8, 27 or 90 or any age in between. We pray a blessing on them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Any travelling this week? Anybody going anywhere? You as well. Where are you going? Or who's going? Hmm? Can't hear you. Lincolnshire. Lincolnshire. Okay. Anybody else going anywhere? Home. <laughs> yeah. Home for a nap in my case. <laughs> okay. Let's pray for all travellers. Father, we pray for safe travels and safe journeys. We pray for everyone who travels through our parish in the week ahead on the great Cambridge Road and the North Circular. We pray for any one of our congregation as they go about their business. We pray that you are with us all in our goings out and our comings in. We pray journey mercies for the journey to Lincolnshire, that you may find um, a safe journey and a happy arrival and return. And we ask all of this in your name, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Anything I've missed? Have we got a, a roof raiser to go out on, Tosin? Uh, of course we have a roof raiser. Is it one where people will be required to stand up and dance? You think? You think it might be a dancey one? What do you think, choir? Okay, I'm afraid it's compulsory. If you are comfortable standing, then you are comfortable dancing. So let's, um, let's stand first for God's blessing. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory. Oh, I'm gone. Sung the happy birthday. Oh, well, you should have sung me sooner. Okay, let's sing happy birthday. I am sorry, I do forget happy birthday sometimes. We'll sing happy birthday to Matilda and Winnie and what's your son's name? And eight. Sorry about that. But now let's have God's blessing. So, God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.